In the last weeks, media all over the world have reported about a novel coronavirus called 2019 NCOV. This virus most likely first appeared in workers at a market in Wuhan, China, and we find headlines everywhere such as China goes into emergency mode as number of confirmed Wuhan coronavirus cases reaches 2700. Or coronavirus 73 test negative in UK as China theft toll hits 82, live updates. Coronavirus ability to spread getting stronger, China suggests. While I'm doing my research in 2019 NCUV, cases have been confirmed in over 12 different countries, including China, Thailand, Japan, France or the United States. There are currently no treatments or vaccines against this virus and governments try to take action. But what do scientists really know about this virus so far and where does it originate from? And what can we as a society do in order to prevent further outbreaks? My name is Kevin Steinig and today we talk about the coronavirus, which currently appears all over the world. But before we start this video, just a short disclaimer. Since this virus only appeared a few weeks ago, we need to study it extensively before we fully understand it. This is the reason why some articles you read might contradict each other in some details. There are also frequent updates about this virus and therefore facts such as the number of infected people are constantly being revised. I've got the latest information about 2019 COV, but be aware that some facts might change in the next days. So, what do we know about the virus so far? The novel coronavirus or 2019 NCOV belongs as the name suggests to the large family of coronaviruses. In this family of viruses we can also find other pathogens which can cause respiratory diseases in mammals and birds. In humans we know examples such as the common cold which is caused by these viruses but also Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome or SARS. You might remember SARS from a devastating epidemic which occurred between 2002 and 2003. This epidemic resulted in over 8,000 cases and 700 deaths across 37 countries. SARS is also one of the reasons why 2019 NCOV is seen as particularly vicious. Compared to other coronaviruses, however, 2019 NCOV seems to be less fatal. So what happens if we're being infected with this virus? Well, the most symptoms are flu-like. We might experience fever or breathing difficulties, but also a sore throat or a headache. However, there have also been more severe and even fatal cases, mostly in elderly and diseased people. In China, for example, a 61-year-old man with an abdominal tumor and cirrhosis was admitted to a hospital due to respiratory failure and severe pneumonia. This patient experienced acute respiratory distress syndrome, septic shock and multi-organ failure and he later died. By the time of this video, over 2,700 people have been infected in China alone and over 80 died. It is likely, however, that this number is an underestimation, as not all cases are being reported. Moreover, some scientists currently try to find out if this coronavirus is also asymptomatic in some patients. This would mean that some people could be infected without knowing it, thereby spreading the disease even further. We also suspect that this novel coronavirus might remain dormant in infected people for between two days and two weeks. In this period of time, the patient might show no clinical symptoms, but the virus can already infect other people. Of course, this phenomenon is common in other pathogens as well, but we need to determine how long this period is in a novel coronavirus. So where does 2019 NCOV actually originate from and how is it being transmitted? Researchers at Wuhan University tried to find out where 2019 NCOV comes from. They conducted genetic tests to find out which other viruses this strain is related to. And they concluded that this coronavirus originates from an unknown coronavirus and another one found in bats. Since first reports of this virus came up in workers at the market at Wuhan, it is believed that the virus used snakes as a reservoir before acquiring the ability to affect humans. The process for which a virus can affect new species is called zoonosis. Here different factors such as habitat modification, environmental changes or genetic mutation might lead to the ability to infect other species. And it is estimated that over 75% of all infectious diseases in humans originate from other animals. What I want to point out however is that there still needs to be a lot of research conducted in order to really know where this virus originates from. What we do know is that this virus can probably be transmitted between humans. It is not entirely known however if this virus spreads via respiratory droplets just like the influenza virus. 
It might also be possible that this novel coronavirus spreads through closer human-to-human -human contact. Unfortunately, there are currently no effective treatments or vaccines against coronaviruses. There have been some vaccines being tested in animals, but they are not ready for use yet. Some scientists are now trying to use drugs which have been developed after the SARS epidemic. This includes Rolf Hilgenfeld, who currently tries to travel to China in order to test his drugs on animals. Since this drug testing will take a while, however, it is likely that the epidemic has already been over when they're ready. But there are some progresses. Researchers at the Charretier Universitätsmedizin Berlin have developed a test to quickly diagnose this virus. They're now working on making this technology wildly available. Besides researchers spending long nights in the laboratory, different governments have also tried to take actions. The Chinese government has put Wuhan, a city with over 11 million inhabitants, under quarantine. Two new hospitals are also being built in the next two weeks. However, isolation might not be very effective. For example, a recent study concluded that travel restrictions from and to Wuhan city are unlikely to be effective. With a 99% effective reduction in travel, the size of the epidemic outside of Wuhan may only be reduced by roughly 25%. Other countries now also want to start taking action. The United States, for example, plans to screen passengers on flights from and to China. On Sunday, American diplomats have also been evacuated on a charter flight. So you see, a lot of things are happening right now. But what can we as a society do in order to prevent further outbreaks? According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we should wash our hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. It is also important to cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue and it is first suggested to use fitted masks, ventilation and avoiding crowded places. On a broader scale, it is also important to read and to share public data in order to prevent public fear. So, I hope that you have seen that the race between the coronavirus and scientists all over the world has already started and only time will tell when we'll be able to get this under control. So with that, I pass questions to you. What do you think about the situation? How concerned are you about the coronavirus? Do you know anything from other current epidemics? And if so, could you share it with the others in the comment section? And if you want to be updated on this virus, tell me in the comment section as well and I will make another video. I also plan to make another video if a major breakthrough occurs. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button if you haven't done so so far in order to stay informed. And with that, I'll see ya.